Hey guys, it's Brooke with Super Tutor TV. Are you wondering what activities should I do to impress colleges or do the activities that I happen to do help make me a better candidate for college admissions? Before we get into things, I recommend that everyone subscribe to our channel. You can do so by clicking subscribe below this video and head to our website, supertutortv.com slash subscribe to subscribe to our mailing list, as well as to check out the best ACT prep course ever. It's over 50 hours of video content. It's at your own pace and it's a heck of a lot cheaper than thousands of dollars of private tutoring. So go check that out. Let's get going. So what are some activities that colleges do care about? Well, first of all, what I'm going to say is that there's no one activity that colleges think is better than any other activity. Colleges are looking more at the end game result of what your activities produce more than they are the specific area of interest that your particular activity covers. It's not as if they like athletes more than they like musicians. In fact, colleges want a diverse student body. They want students who do lots of different activities. The second thing that I'm going to say is when I make this video, I can't speak for every college in the United States. First of all, that's just impossible. But what I'll also say is for the most part, I'm focusing on the kind of schools that are very competitive. That means they typically have less than a 25% admit rate and they typically are ranked in the top 50 schools in the United States on some sort of nationally recognized list. That's what I'm dealing with for the most part. So with my caveats aside, I'm going to talk through four things that colleges are looking for in activities that make you a standout candidate. And the first idea that I'm going to talk about is the idea of leadership. Leadership can take multiple forms. Leadership could be a specific role that you take within an activity that you're involved in, such as being president of the student council, right? Leadership can also be the idea of taking initiative and being a little bit entrepreneurial and making something happen. And in terms of how colleges look at leadership, like what leadership is more important than other leadership, you know, it really is gonna come down to individual colleges. But the bottom line that I can tell you guys is that if you're taking initiative, meaning you're coming up with ideas and you're trying to have an impact on the world around you, that's what leadership is. I think there's a misconception that leadership is simply getting voted by your peers into a quote, position of leadership. Leadership is an attribute that evidences itself in the way that you act and in the results that you produce. So I encourage all of you to look for opportunities for leadership in the activities that you have, and that could be everything from being captain of the baseball team to actually creating some sort of brand new initiative or project or something that um, really proves that you are going to be making a difference in the world, okay? All right, let's get on to my second factor that I think colleges are looking for. And that factor is excellence. So what could that look like? Well, that could look like maybe you play the violin and you're a really rock star violinist. And maybe you play your violin in concerts at the local college because you're that good. Maybe you are in your youth symphony. It could also be just that you're really good at whatever you do. So that could mean that you're really good at rhythmic gymnastics or fencing. Now, what I'm gonna say with excellence is you definitely can tread the trodden path with excellence and be very good at something that is traditional, right? You could be really good at a sport. You could be really good at music. You could be really good at these sort of traditional extracurricular activities that most high schools in the United States offer. If you rise to the top at your school and then you rise to the top in your district and you rise to the top in your state, right? You can be the best debater in the state, whatever it is. That's one path to being excellent. But there's kind of a back door to being excellent. And that's the other thing that I want to talk about, because I know some of you are like, I'm never going to be the best tennis player in my state. Like, that's just never going to happen. So how the heck do I show excellence? Well, another kind of back door to excellence is if you can do something that's a little bit more original and you can be really good at that kind of random original thing, sometimes that's a path to getting into the excellence door at a top 10 school where this kind of thing actually matters a lot and sneaking in even though you know you wouldn't ever be excellent enough if you did something that thousands of people are doing, right? Like being the best violinist, like that's really hard. But being the best sitar player, that might be a possibility. But whatever it is that you do, if you do it with excellence and you can find a way to stand out, that really stands out to colleges. All right, let's move on to the next factor. The next factor is commitment. 
Colleges care about activities that you have committed yourself to, and that means that you spend a good amount of time doing them. This goes without saying, if you're trying to be excellent at something, a lot of the time to be excellent at something, you have to put a good amount of time into it, right? That's not to say that you can't do something senior year only and it won't be impressive. But what I would say is that if you've put a lot of time and effort into some passion or into some activity over the years, that's going to show and it's going to speak to colleges. So just keep that in mind. If you have a narrative that's extended over the course of years, that's really important. I know for my international students, this can sometimes be very difficult. I know I've worked with students in Asia before and they have so much expected of them in terms of academics that they don't have time for activities. And so it's really hard for them to show this kind of commitment factor. If you're in that boat, my best advice is to just find all the time that you can and to try to show that commitment however you can. Maybe it's that you amp up the hours that you spend during the summer or maybe it means that you try to take on some activities that are more independent in some way. Maybe that means you're doing a research project, or maybe that means you're writing articles or creating art that you're submitting to competitions or something like that. But whatever it is, make sure that you're committed and that you are spending enough time on something to show colleges that you know how to dedicate yourself to an idea. So the fourth thing that I'm gonna talk about is something what I call a wow factor. And how do you get a wow factor? Well, you get a wow factor by doing something that makes people go, whoa, or wow. And what activities do that? Well, part of the, the prerequisite for being a wow activity often has to do with the idea of it being something that not every high school student is doing. So to get a wow factor, you might need to think outside the box a little bit. There's the obvious wow factors, and that's that you've qualified for the top levels of whatever high school competitions exist. And that's like the traditional route. And that traditional route, it goes for every sport, it goes for musical instruments, it goes for all of that kind of stuff. But I also think you can come up with a wow factor in unconventional ways too. And that can be maybe your activity itself is a little bit unconventional, but you rise to the top of it. I had a girl that I worked with several years ago who got into MIT and she was, creating MATLAB coding and, and basically studying epidemiology using raw data from Twitter online and like number crunching to try to see if she could read trends in like influenza and um, infections throughout different regions of the United States. I mean, and I'm probably botching all of this here, but my point is, is like she was able to write in her essays about this really cool self-study project that she was doing that kind of made my jaw drop a little bit because I was like, what? How would you even think to do that as a high school student, to be like undergoing independent research on like epidemiology through data and be like data crunching because you want to go into statistics and data crunching. Like that's really impressive and really cool. Another thing that can really produce a wow factor is anything that... Uh, you pursue, that's the kind of thing that you would usually expect only an adult to do. If you can do something that's impressive in the same way that an adult would be impressive, if you, if you can do something entrepreneurial, if you can do something that affects the real world or that interacts with the real world in a very tangible way, in a way that an impressive adult could do, that can create a wow factor, okay? I know some of you might be very overwhelmed by this idea of trying to find a wow factor, but it is what it is. I would say it's very hard to engineer a wow factor. It can be, but that's why it's a wow factor. So my best advice is to just try to think of the ways that you can be creative and that you can push the envelope and that you can do something that a normal teenager wouldn't do. If you can do that, that's really gonna stand out to colleges, especially like your top 10 schools. Colleges care about this stuff for very selective admissions. And just because you don't have all this stuff doesn't mean that you're not awesome or you don't have something to offer or that you won't get into a top college. I'm just saying that if you have an activity that falls in the range of any of these ideas that I talked about today, that could be a bonus on your application that could actually help push it forward or push it to the top of the pile. I'm talking about activities that move the needle, not activities that you must have in order to get into any top 50 school. They're activities that are going to make you stand out and rise to the top of the pile. Now, again, if we're talking top 10 schools, 
these might be necessary depending on what your background is and depending on what the competition looks like in any given year. But I hope you guys found this helpful. If you did, please subscribe to our channel here and go check us out. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, we're all over the map. So please connect with us and stay tuned and we will see all of you guys next time on Super Tutor TV. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.